Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering culture. I got a couple comments in the comment section saying, Professor D, please cover culture. So this video is for you. If you guys haven't done so already, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for supporting my video. I'm saying this in advance. Please don't forget to go ahead and forward this video to any nursing students or new grads that you know of. So let's get started. First question. Traditional Western medicine, in contrast to alternative therapy, uses one, acupuncture, two, herbal therapy, three, spiritual advising, or four, medical administration. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. If you need more time, just go ahead and press that pause button. So the correct answer is four, medication administration. So Choices one, two, and three are all forms of alter alternative therapy when compared to traditional Western um, medicine, which is a medication administration, okay? Next question. The nurse is completing an assessment of an Asian American client. Recognizing that there are commonly seen problems in individuals from this background, the nurse observes for particular signs and symptoms of one, hypertension, two, tuberculosis, three, diabetes, or four, lactose intolerance. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. So the correct answer is lactose intolerance. And this is often seen in people of the Asian um, population or Hispanics. Okay, let's look at other choices. One, hypertension. Who do we see hypertension, traditionally speaking, who do we see hypertension in? African Americans, okay? Two, tuberculosis. We tend to see that in the Native Americans, the Native North Americans. Three, uh, diabetes. That's a big one. Diabetes is a big one for Native Americans, Okay, but when it comes to um, lactose intolerance, we tend to see that again, like I said, in the Asian, very heavily in the Asian population and also in the Hispanic population. Next question. The nurse recognizes the following as an appropriate strategy for communicating with the clients who are not fluent in English. One, speaking in a louder tone of voice. Two, incorporating hand gestures and pictures. Three, responding to the client by his or her first name. Or four, interacting with the translator for all correspondence. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. And the correct answer, the only correct answer, what you want to do is incorporating hand gestures and pictures. Okay, so this person, they don't speak English fluently. What are you going to try to use? Alternate forms of communication to help you with these choices. Okay, let's go over the wrong choices. One, speaking in a louder voice. Don't you ever in your life choose that as an answer. They're not deaf. They just can't understand your language. So speaking in a louder voice is not going to do anything to make them understand your language. Uh, three, responding to the client by his or her first name. That is so disrespectful. It is always Mr. or Ms. until they tell you, oh, call me by such and such. But you do not call them by their first name unless they allow you to. And last, interacting with the translator for all correspondence. Don't ever do that. So what you want to do, if there is a translator, an official translator, which that's always what you want. That's always your first choice. You either use a language line or an official translator. You never use family member. You never use coworker. You want an official translator and preferably you want the translator to be of the same socioeconomic or close to the same socioeconomic background of the person they're translating okay and the reason for that is because if the if the person that's translating is perceived to be as a higher class Haitian or Jamaican or Hispanic or whatever it is, many times the patient may not divulge sensitive information because they don't want the translator to look down on them. So you always want to use an official translator and try to get an official translator as close to the socioeconomic background as the person you're translating for as possible, okay? 
So anyway, moving on. There was something else I wanted to say to you. What did I want to say to you? Oh, I think that was the point. Um, whenever you get a question about a patient that doesn't speak the same language, your first option is always going to be a language line or an official translator. Never a family member, never a coworker. Next question. While going through the process of acculturation, a client will be one, identifying with two or more cultures, two, adapting to and adopting a new culture, three, showing favor to the dominant culture, or four, socializing within their primary cultural group. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. And the correct answer is two, adopting to and adopting a new culture, okay? So that is acculturation. So you start to take on the mannerisms and even the, the eating styles, the diet of this new culture. Let's look at our other choices. You have one, identifying two or more cultures. Two or more culture, that's called biculturation. Two, get it, two, by bi Biculturation, that's adopting two or more cultures. Three, showing favor to the dominant culture. Guys, this is when um, this is when they give up their ethnicity, okay? And that's known as assimilation. So they give up their ethnicity, they give up their culture for the dominant culture. And then you have the last one, socializing with their primary cultural group. So this is when they're in a new country, but they only want to socialize and just stay in that bubble of their own cultural group. And that's known as enculturation. Okay, so that's the difference between those. Next question. When faced with a scenario where it is believed that a client from another cultural background is using herbal remedies along with the prescribed medication to treat her arthritis, the nurse's first action would be to one, educate the client concerning the danger of taking herbs and the prescribed medication. Two, inquire of the client as to the reason for using herbal remedies along with the prescribed medication. Three, Ask the client to identify what herbal rem re remedies are being used along with prescribed medications. I'm sorry, I can't speak today. Four, alert the physician to the client's use of herbal remedies in addition to the prescribed medication. And the correct answer is three, ask the client to identify what herbal remedies. Why? First of all, this is in, um, open-ended question okay so it's not a closed-ended question where you just say to the patient are you taking any herbal remedies where they're going to say no right but when you say can you tell me which herbal remedies you're taking asking it in that way in that open uh, ended form basically makes that client feels like okay well you know he or she already knows because they didn't say, are you? They said, oh, tell me what. So let me go ahead and list them off, okay? And that's what you want. You want that open form of communication. So you don't say, are you taking any? Because they're going to say no. You're going to say to them, can you tell me which remedies, herbal remedies you're taking? And if they're not, they're going to say, oh, I'm not taking any. But more often than they're not, they're going to say, oh, I'm taking ginseng. I'm taking blah, blah, blah. And then you get that information and from what that patient says to you you'll you can see if there are any anything that's contraindicated you'll know if there's further teaching that's going to be necessary you're going to know if you need to notify the doctor but you can't do any of that until you actually assess remember what i told you guys the first part, uh, step in ADPI is assessment. And assessment is not only physically examining your patient. Assessment is not only looking at your patient. Assessment is anything that garners information regarding your patient. So asking questions is a form of assessment. So the first thing you want to do is ask questions before you do anything else. Matter of fact, the information you garner from those questions that you ask lets you know what your next step is going to be, what your next intervention is going to be, okay? Next question. An example of a culture where a male relative will regularly decline to observe the birth process is one, 
Pakistani, two, Hispanic, three, Korean, or four, Japanese. And the correct answer is one, Pakistani. And guys, this has more to do with um, uh, not the culture, but religion, okay? So those religions that are more in the Middle East, such as the Muslim religion, such as the Orthodox, Orthodox, did I just say Orthodox? Orthodox Jew, sorry, and the Hindu religion, um, they tend, the male cultures tend um, in that religion, they are not part of the birthing process. So you'd be more likely to see someone from that religious background, a male from that religious background, um, back out of um, being part of the birthing process. Next question. A nurse that has knowledge of the biocultural history of clients and aware that individuals with a greater potential for and incidence of hypertension are one, Asians, two, Hispanics, three, Native Americans, or four, African Americans. And you guys should all know this answer because I gave it to you couple questions ago and the correct answer is African Americans when when it comes to culture and ethnicity African Americans tend to ha um, have more uh, rates of hypertension let's look at our other choices one Asian American no excuse me it says Asian one Asian two Hispanics when it comes to the Asians and Hispanics you tend to see more of what lactose intolerance Three, Native Americans. With Native Americans, you tend to see more of tuberculosis, TB. You tend to see more of uh, um, diabetes, okay? While assessing an older Vietnamese client, the nurse notes several oval-shaped reddened areas on her back and arms. The client's daughter explains them to be the result of traditional healing practice called cupping. The nurse's immediate reaction should be to one, report the finding to authorities to rule out physical abuse. Two, ask the doctor explain the practice in detail. Three, notify the client's healthcare provider to see if treatment is necessary. Four, document the assessment findings in the nursing notes. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. And if you chose the answer to, you are correct. You want to do what first? Assess, ask questions. How do you know if what is going on is something that you should report to the authorities if you didn't even ask questions to find out if it potentially even borderlines on abuse? What are you gonna call the doctor when you, what are you gonna tell the doctor when you call them when you haven't gotten any information from the client? So you're going to assess, you're going to ask questions. And remember guys, assessment also helps you know what further teaching that patient needs, what kind of nursing interventions you're going to need to be doing further for the patient. And this is a short video. We're on our last question for culture. The nurse caring for members of the Hispanic community recognizes which of the following situations as the best reflection of the culture's view of family caring. One, a husband calling each evening to tell his wife good night. Two, family members taking turns staying with the client at night. Three, the daughter bringing her father's favorite soup to the hospital. Four, the eldest son sending a large floral arrangement to the hospital. And the correct answer is two, family members taking turns staying with the client. In the Hispanic culture, um, love, caring, affection is demonstrated by physical presence. So them staying with that family member day in and day out and just taking turns is letting that family member know that they're loved, they are cared for. Guys, I hope um, this video was helpful. Uh, I actually plan on doing another uh, culture video because 
there are some um, culture and some religion stuff that are not on here that I've definitely seen on ATI, HESI, and NCLEX. Um, Seventh Day Adventist, more things about Jew, the Jewish religion, more things about Jehovah's Witness, more things about um, Muslims, uh, more things about African Americans and Native Americans, and I haven't did not see it on this list, so I'm definitely going to make sure I do a follow up video for you to make sure you guys get all those muy importante. Um, culture and religion concepts to know. Guys, if you want to support this channel, please do not forget, make sure that you like and subscribe below. Please forward this video to anyone you know that's in a nursing program or just graduated and you know they'd benefit from my videos, please go ahead and um, forward that over to them. If there's anything you'd like to see covered that haven't, I have not done so already, please do not forget, go ahead, leave a comment for me and I will try my best to make a video for you as soon as possible. Guys, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.